GOP candidates continue to crisscross the Empire State, trying to pick up the support for the April 19th primary. Joining me now, New York Congressman Lee Zeldin. Uh, Congressman, welcome to the show. It's good to be on with you. Uh, there's so many things going on. Uh, just the, the general election, of course, now it's in New York, uh, and then all the things that are going on within the Republican Party. I want to start with that. I, I got to start with that because I feel like there's a, a, a civil war within the GOP uh, that I don't think can be healed. Uh, I'm not sure who the eventual nominee will be, but I don't think he, no matter who it is, will be able to heal the sort of, sort of divisiveness that I see going on right now. Well, it's definitely a, a huge challenge, but it has to be healed. I mean, the fact that we can elect Hillary Clinton as next president of the United States if we don't figure out how to come together. I mean, the candidates themselves, I mean, they're the ones who will play the biggest role in deciding whether or not the party comes back together. Uh, and it's, you know, still have a lot of states to vote. But when this is said and done coming out of the convention, we have to be strong and united. I'm seeing so many, uh, you know, f uh, people who've been fighting for the cause for decades being thrown under the bus. I'm seeing hashtag never this person, never that person. Uh, I, it's tough. And I just, and what about the notion that perhaps it shouldn't heal? Perhaps it should break up. Maybe it shouldn't coexist. Maybe they're just, the ideologies have changed so much that there's an old conservative guard and there's a new forward looking uh, part of the party. After eight years of Barack Obama <laughs> to, to, to break up the party, to come out of this weaker than we were, to not take what is, I mean, so much more enthusiasm on our side, so much more voter participation. Uh, to not take that and, and run with that to a huge victory in November would be, would, I mean, f putting the party aside, it would be devastating for the country. So what do you make of the notion then that some people have been around for a long time, particularly the so-called establishment? I'm not sure where you stand there. Uh, no one would, will admit to being part of the establishment these days. But the so-called establishment has been saying for a long time we need a big tent, not just angry white voters, but we need to bring in Hispanics, blacks, women. What do you make of the fact that those are the people who are saying what's happening right now will hurt us long term? Well, I think that we have a lot of issues that, to our core, as a party, uh, are strong, principled positions that a lot of Democrats agree with us on. And I think just with our messaging, we have to figure out how to communicate our message beyond just talking to each other. But we can't sell out. We can't stop being who we are. We can't stop being conservative and be principled Republicans because we're so desperate to get Democratic votes. Uh, this isn't about changing who we are to, to become them. Let's be ourselves and win the election that way. Well, I, I, I agree, but shouldn't, I, I, first of all, I always thought the idea of uh, constituents for a particular president, so to speak, was weird because ultimately we all should be that person's constituents, right? Well, I, I mean, the, the president of the United States, if he or she is doing a great job, all of us should benefit. That's right. I, when an election is over, what we should be doing is rooting for the President of the United States, uh, rooting for our new governor, whether you support that person or someone else, to succeed. Because when they succeed, your state succeeds. When they succeed, your country succeeds. Unfortunately, right now we have a President of the United States who, you know, success for him in many ways weakens America. So we can't root for this guy. Before I let you go, I know you spent a, a fair amount of time in the military. Uh, and uh, the question of waterboarding came up over the weekend. Uh, CIA director saying uh, even if uh, there was a new president and he was ordered to do this, he would, he would dis disobey that order. Would, would, what, would you, what do you make of that? Oh, I, I believe that waterboarding is necessary and if we have the ability to stop another terrorist attack on the World Trade Center or somewhere else, if it's going to save uh, American lives and you know, hundreds and thousands of American lives, it is absolutely necessary. Uh, for us, we can't worry about being politically correct to the point where we are sacrificing national security. It's an important technique. It's worked. We have to use it intelligently, but to rule it out altogether is not in the best interest of American security. I'm with you a thousand percent, yeah. Representative. Thank you very much. Thank you, Appreciate it.